Hi, today I'm talking about the American silent movie star Olive Thomas, who tragically died at the age of 25. Olive Thomas was an American silent movie actress and model. She was born Oliva R. Duffy to James and Rena Duffy in Charleroi, Pennsylvania on the 20th of October 1894. She was the eldest of three children. She had two younger brothers, James and William. The family were for Irish descent, hence the surname Duffy. Her father, who was a steel worker, died in an accident at work in 1906. Her mother, Rena, moved the family to be closer to her parents, as she was now a single mother to three children. They set up home in McKees Rocks in Pennsylvania, which was a small mill town. Rena worked in a factory and married Harry M. Van Cook. They had a daughter, Harriet, who was born in 1914, but sadly she died in a car accident in 1931. Olive left school at 15 to work so she could help with the family's finances. She worked as a clerk in department stores. One of the places she worked in was Kaufman's in Pittsburgh. In 1911, at the age of 16, Olive married Bernard Krug Thomas. When they split up in 1913, Olive moved to New York City and while working in a Harlem department store, she entered a beauty competition. It was to find the most beautiful girl in New York and she won. This led to her having a successful modelling career, posing for artists such as Harrison Fisher and Howard Christie. Then Florence Ziegfeld snapped her up for his vaudeville show, The Ziegfeld Follies. She was so successful as a Ziegfeld girl that she was invited to perform in the late show called The Midnight Frolic, which was staged on the roof garden of the New Amsterdam Theatre. The show's patrons were rich men who would give the young female performers expensive gifts. It was said she wore a costume with balloons and the men were invited to burst the balloons with their cigars. She became Siegfried's mistress. In 1916, Olive signed a film contract with the International Film Company. Her first film was A Girl Like That in 1917. She then signed with Triangle Pictures. She went on to feature in over 20 movies, including Indiscreet Kareen, Limousine Life and Tote on the Apache. She signed with Myron Selznick's Selznick Pictures Company and made Upstairs and Down and The Flapper in 1920. The Flapper was one of her most popular movies. In 1916, she secretly married Jack Pickford. He was the brother of Lottie Pickford. He was also the brother of silent movie superstar Mary Pickford. Olive was 22 years old and Jack was 20. Olive said it was a secret because she didn't want to trade on the Pickford name. The prestigious Pickford family didn't approve of Olive because of her dodgy past. Jack and Olive were known for their fast living, drinking, partying and rumoured cocaine using. In 1920 she posed nude from the waist up for Peruvian artist Alberto Vargas. The portrait was called Memories of Olive. In her autobiography, Mary Pickford said, The beauty of Olive Thomas is legendary. The girl had the loveliest violet blue eyes I've ever seen. They were fringed with long dark lashes that seemed darker because of the delicate translucent pallor of her skin. Jack and Olive decided to spend some time together in Paris, which was said to be a second honeymoon. Their marriage was rocky because of Jack's cheating and Olive's partying. Trying to mend the relationship, they sailed from New York to Paris in August 1920. When they arrived in the city, they checked into the Paris Ritz Hotel. On the 5th of September, the couple went out for the evening, eating and drinking in the Montparnasse Quarter and then returned to their hotel room at about 3am. A terrible event happened shortly afterwards. There are differing accounts. In her autobiography, Mary Pickford writes, The night of Wally's death in Paris, she and Jack had been doing the night spots. At one o'clock, Jack insisted on taking Ollie back to the hotel, since they were leaving at seven that morning by plane for London. They were already undressed when a crowd of friends trooped in, scolding them for breaking up the party and ordering them back into their clothes to continue making the rounds until dawn. Jack said he was too tired and the crowd finally left. Jack went to bed and Ollie started to write a letter to her mother, outlining their future plans. The unfinished letter was still on the desk after she was taken to hospital. Jack awakened with the light in his eyes, surprised to see Ollie still up. Please come to bed, darling, he said. It's so late and I can't sleep with that light on. 
Ollie answered petulantly, you don't care that I can't sleep, do you? I've got an awful headache. Ollie turned out the lights and went to the window overlooking the street. Why don't you take an aspirin, Jack said and went back to sleep. Again he was awakened by a crash and a scream. Ollie was standing in the darkened bathroom. Jack rushed to her side. Quick, Jack, she said, turn the light on and see if the bottle with the bichloride of mercury tablets is in the cabinet. Jack looked and said, no, Ollie, only the aspirin bottle is here. Ollie gave another scream, then I've taken poison. Ollie had put the mercury tablets somewhere else, but the maid had evidently placed the bottles, which were of the same size, side by side on the shelf of the medicine cabinet. Jack tried to wash out Ollie's stomach by giving her 12 to 15 glasses of tepid water. Then he dashed downstairs to secure some melted butter and milk, but everything was tightly locked, kitchens and ice boxes, and no one was around but the night watchman. After a frantic search, Jack obtained the milk and butter, and in the meantime he tried to get the American hospital on the telephone. An ambulance arrived, but only after much precious time had been lost. Jack Pickford's story differs. He told the Los Angeles examiner, Olive and I were the greatest pals on earth. Her death is a ghastly mistake. We both cancelled work in America to take a belated honeymoon. We were the happiest couple imaginable. Coming over, she gave me a big birthday party aboard ship. When we arrived in Paris, her only thought was that she had to buy some dresses and then go back home to complete her picture contracts so that she could settle down and have some babies. I went to London to buy some clothes for myself and arrived back in Paris the fateful Saturday night. We had dinner with a few friends and went to the cafes. They actually went to the Dead Rat nightclub. We arrived back at the Ritz Hotel at about three o'clock in the morning. I had already booked airplane seats for London. We were going Sunday morning. Both of us were tired out. We had both been drinking a little and I insisted that we had better not pack then, but rather get up early before our flight to do it then. I went to bed immediately. She fussed around and wrote a note to her mother. It read, Mama dear, well and having a nice time, leaving here September the 11th. I will cable you from the boat and will tell you all the news when I arrive. Olive loved to wall. She was in the bathroom. Suddenly she shrieked. My God, I jumped out of bed, rushed toward her and caught her in my arms. She cried to me to find out what was in the bottle and I picked it up and read, poison. It was a toilet solution and the label was in French. I realized what she had done and sent for the doctor. Meanwhile, I forced her to drink water in order to make her vomit. She screamed, oh my God, I'm poisoned. I forced the whites of eggs down her throat, hoping to offset the poison. The doctor came. He pumped her stomach three times while I held Olive. Nine o'clock in the morning, I took her to the American hospital where doctors Choate and Wharton took charge of her. They told me she had swallowed by chloride of mercury in an alcoholic solution, which is 10 times worse than tablets. She didn't want to die, she took the poison by mistake. So what she took differs, it was by chloride of mercury tablets in one account and by chloride of mercury in an alcoholic solution in another account. What Jack gave her differs, it was either melted butter and milk or egg whites. Jack probably said it was a toilet cleaner to save himself from embarrassment as mercury by chloride was used for cheating and STD. And as this is YouTube, I will say it's the one that begins with S and ends in S. He just thought he was the one who was suffering from it and not Olive. The conclusion is that Olive, tipsy from her night out, thought the contents of the container was either aspirin or sleeping pills or drinking water or a sleeping draught. In an article for the Los Angeles Examiner, Dr. Warden, a poison specialist, discussed the merit of a police investigation. He said it would show whether Miss Thomas had deliberately taken it, as the medical evidence indicates, or whether she took the stuff by mistake, as claimed. Personally, I am convinced that if she had taken a sleeping potion in the same quantity as she took the poison, she would be dead just the same. The bichloride of mercury burned her throat and made her blind. At the American Hospital in New Early Sassane, Olive died in agony four days later, on the 10th of September 1920. The inquest recorded an accidental death caused by acute nephritis, which is an inflammation of the kidneys. Other people thought that she had deliberately taken the medicine or that Jack had murdered her for insurance money. Owen Moore, Mary Pickford's ex-husband, who was with the couple in Paris, stated that Olive was very happy. She was young, beautiful, rich and successful, so why should she kill herself? Also, she had written that cheerful note to her mother. 
In Mary Pickford's autobiography, she wrote of her brother Jack's admission that he had thought of killing himself by jumping overboard on the sea voyage back to the States with Olive's body because he was so devastated by her death. Her funeral in New York was attended by 15,000 mourners. Olive didn't leave a will. Her estate was split between her mother, brothers and Jack Pickford. Jack gave his share to Olive's mother. Her possessions were auctioned off, things such as her diamond and sapphire jewellery, furs, cars, clothes and a platinum and crystal cigarette case. Her last film, Everybody's Sweetheart, was released after her death in October 1920. Olive's ghost is supposed to haunt the New Amsterdam Theatre on 42nd Street in New York, the theatre she worked in during her Segfield Follies days. Jack died in the same hospital in Paris as Olive on the 3rd of January 1933 of multiple neuritis, which is an inflammation of a nerve or nerves caused by injury or infection. So this could be either caused by his alcoholism or the STD infection. Olive was buried in a mausoleum in Woodlawn Cemetery, 501 East 233rd Street in the Bronx, New York. Her plot is in the Wintergreen section. Jack was buried in Forest Lawn Memorial Park in Glendale. So what do you think happened to Olive? Why did she take the medication? It's so tragic at the age of 25 and she had everything to live for. So if you like this video, please like, share, subscribe, press the notification bell and I'll see you in the next one.